A blessed feast of the glorious ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ to all of you. This small devotion on the subject of the great feast of the ascension, I'd like to entitle Duft on the Throne. Duft on the Throne. In our current experience, at least in my little world, the great feast of the ascension of our Lord is terribly neglected. And there may be many reasons for this. One that I can think of is the general Orthodox Christian practice of not going to church much during the week. And as a great feast, which always falls on a Thursday uh, in the middle of the week every year, being 40 days after Holy Pascha, this may be one of the reasons that uh, it's neglected. Another may simply be the ignorance in the minds of the faithful of the incredible significance of the ascension of the Lord. This saving act of our Savior, this mighty work of our champion, Jesus Christ, uh, is not well understood. So allow me just for a moment to emphasize uh, the incredible reality of the ascension of Jesus and what it means for you, what it means for all believers. If, uh, as a side note, you'd like to see how important it has been to the church over the centuries, I would recommend uh, an article, a paper, documenting the primary sources uh, in the patristic and Byzantine tradition with regards to the ascension that you can find on academia.edu, uh, posted by um, a young and very fine and budding scholar, Tikhon Pino. Uh, and that article is called The Ascension uh, in the Patristic and Byzantine tradition. You can find it there and you'll see incredible wealth of uh, resources. Do you know that St. Gregory Palamas in his Oration 21, in his Homily 21, which is dedicated to the subject of the ascension of Jesus, he says that uh, the ascension provides us a cause of celebration even greater than that of Pascha. How can that be? How can that be? Well, it's really quite simple. It's really quite simple. Pascha is the defeat of death, and we are rejoicing because we have, along with all of humanity, feared death from the fall until Jesus, the first who ever conquered death, did so. Uh, and so we believers who are united to Christ and who trust him now have the confidence that when we die, we are not going to go down. We're no longer going to descend in, uh, into the dark abyss of Hades uh, in the grip of uh, the devils. Instead, we now share Jesus's uh, victory over death. But the ascension shows us that salvation is not a matter of simply not going down. If it was just that, we would be incredibly thankful. But that is not the Christian faith. The Christian faith offers us a salvation. Jesus has worked for us something even far greater than that. When believers die, we don't just not go down into the abyss. We, in fact, go up. We go up and up into places that prior to Jesus' ascension, no human being had ever gone. The ascension, in fact, has established glorified, deified humanity on the throne of God above the heavens itself. The dust of the earth, our flesh, now sits on the throne of the universe. And this is our future. Where Jesus is, we by his grace will also be. And this is the great glory of the ascension. This is why we rejoice with uh, an exuberance even greater than that of Pascha, St. Gregory Palamas says, because our salvation is that great. This is our future. If you listen to the gospel text for the feast today, the gospel text ends with the disciples being full of joy witnessing the ascension of the Lord. And that is certainly how we should be if we have a strong knowledge of the ascension. We have to be very careful not to be living our faith without a theology of the ascension, without a deep grasp of what it means for us and our future. So much of our holding on to the earth comes because we don't have a true Christian understanding of our destiny. And that destiny, if the throne of God, with Christ our Lord, in a life of unspeakable glory uh, and deification. Our flesh has been staked there, and we have confidence in this life. We have confidence that our Lord governs all, over all, that he has taken his seat at the right hand of his Father, and there he reigns. He has his 
mighty session governing all things for the good of his church, advancing the cause of the gospel until the knowledge of the Lord covers the earth as the waters cover the sea. This is our future, and so rejoice, dear ones, in the glorious ascension of the Lord, and I wish you many happinesses all the days of this feast. Christ is ascended from earth to heaven.